Raymond? Um, our strategy for this year, I think it's going to be um, a difficult market. But we just focus mainly on the earning sustainability of companies uh, and the transformation of certain companies. In this aspect, uh, um, one of my topics over this with Ting Bu, well, this is uh, Paxson, so I will not uh, e much <laughs> elaborate more. <laughs> this is Paxson uh, since uh, Ting Bu has re uh, elaborate more. But I would just add in one more fact in that the expansion in China, um, they're not looking at the, you should look, look beyond the coastal cities. You should look beyond the uh, Beijing, China, Shenzhen. You look at the second tier, third tier cities. But the back of my second tier cities, if you look at, um, if you just say they can take at face value, I see a second rate city, a smaller. We're talking about cities with population of 15, 20 million. These are not small. But by the reason they are not the three main centers, they are deep second tier cities. But in terms of population, they can be as big as Peninsula. So this it is, I think, uh, and in five years' time, these second tier cities uh, will become first tier cities, and third tier cities will become second tier cities. So the sustainability of that moving on is going to be tremendous if they manage to continue to execute right and be focused. Um, shareholder risk notwithstanding, <laughs> right? Are they opening new stores in these second tier cities? Yes, I think the focus is there. I mean, if you talk of uh, competing in your Beijing and your Shanghai, it's getting more difficult, right? Uh, the, the people there has become more savvy in the sense that they are looking more for Western brands, more for looking for more for Western Western style shops. Your WalMarts, they look. They will be buying your LVs. Uh, I think Beijing got the biggest LV store in the world, uh, next to Japan and Asia. So it's, they're going to be moving up market, so you're going to move for the next tier, which is coming up. I mean, the 20 years ago, the D brand to own for a Chinese consumer male is Go Lion. You remember that brand, mm. right? Now Go Lion is nowhere because the import brands have taken over, right? And this cycle will continue. Right, your second tier cities will take probably 10, 15 years to come up to the first tier. And your third tier cities will take about 10, 15 years to become second tier cities by this critical mass. So you have a long-term sustainable model that you can basically move your stores to where your future population, your future markets are. Right, so, and they're replicating all that in China. So I think it's a long-term model. The risk of that, I think, says is a uh, shareholder risk, which I can... Uh, um, which I can sympathize with, right? Because my next stock also belongs to the same group, uh, Lion Industries, mainly because of the steel, uh, the steel prices, and this stock is even traded cheaper versus its uh, uh, peers because of the same factor, the shareholder, um, the, share the risk of a shareholder changing his mind and re remodeling the company. But at the moment. Uh, I think they offer one of the better values in terms of valuation. I mean, we are this currently is what trading, I think five times or below five times. You just take a, s you don't take ten times to double. Just take a f seven or eight times is still about forty to sixty percent uh, upside to your share price. So we are not looking that they will basically be rated similarly to your Anjus, uh, but maybe a discount. But even that, that performs a better, much better upside, right? Qualifying again, that show the risk uh, is of course pretty much uh, quite there. The third company is a large cap resorts. Um, basically, I think that we have got over the fact that resorts is uh, bailing out its own, uh, um, uh, how would say, group company, Star Cruises, by divesting it off. I think that the, there was much better just the cash flow. And a company that results generating cash flow at uh, 500 plus million a year um, is self-repairing any balance sheets, right? 500 million a year repairs a lot in the balance sheet. So within a year or two, um, I think results will be back in, uh, have a war chest, a big war chest again. And, they get, and with that kind of uh, cash, they can easily raise another couple of billion in the market to make acquisitions, right? So I think that uh, Resource is much better off in this in, in this environment versus Genting. Genting has a lot of capital commitments in the I in the uh, indicator resource in, in uh, Singapore, where cost where they hit with cost escalations again and again to GIL. So I would think a much more pure play now, sheltered away from the possible cost increases, is resource, 
right? The and I think that the much rumored privatization, um, I don't think that happened. It's just uh, too expensive at this point in time, and it doesn't add any purpose um, to the whole group. The fourth stock, the last two stocks are uh, oil and gas stocks, uh, in line with uh, the market theme that we entirely with. With the earnings growth that we have, first of all uh, is Ramunia, which is uh, undergoing a major exercise to be taken over by MISC. In that sense, that uh, MM it's actually MMHE, which is a subsidiary of MISC. They need the yard space which uh, Ramunia has, and Ramunia shareholders is always wanting to sell up. So, possibly by by the time the exercise uh, concludes, uh, MISC will be the biggest shareholder in Ramunia and will channel a lot of the work uh, from its yards um, mm. to Ramunia. Okay. Uh, they probably end up owning uh, a bit more than three quarters of Ramunia. So that's one the transformation play. Um, the last one is uh, Dialog, which is a pretty unique oil and gas company compared uh, with the others. Um, they're not in the AHTS space, they're not in the uh, fabrication space, then the project financing uh, type of phase, and they are looking at basically sustainability earnings. The way they model the company is they look for long-term sustainability earnings. They have a share in the project which they build. And of all oil, oil and gas companies, this is the only one which is totally ungeared with net cash. And the cash flow comes in at about 50 million a year. So this one company is very, very prudently managed. Uh, gearing up, a billion is no billion, no problem to this company, but they choose to go this route in to basically take on project management. So this is one company which is a, a quite a unique diff business model in this uh, sector as compared uh, with the all the other um, oil and gas players. For Paxson. I thought that perhaps Bingling may be more familiar with the stores than uh, <laughs> the guys. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody here is very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we are more more familiar with the Pakistan Malaysia store. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> which uh, to us is uh, well, basically mid mid market range. Uh. Mm. But if you have gone to China, which I'm sure all of you have, just walk in any of the Pakistan stores, uh, it's very different. I guess we can't transport our experience with Pakistan locally to to what is happening in China. Yeah. And also in case of Pakistan China, they rely a, a lot more on concessions. So the uh, business model is actually quite quite safe uh, mm. in the yeah. sense that if this concessionaire is not doing so well, I just move to another one yeah. without much risk to them. It looks like they may need to reverse the business model from there to here. <laughs> uh, high growth. I, I mean, they're also adding value to the company by buying out a lot of the mm. minorities Minority. which they have. Mm. So, and they're buying at cheap valuations. So, and it's um, enhancing to valuations mm. immediately, mm. right? And the way they order um, a range of stores like Ningbu says, uh, there's revenue sharing in there. So the concessions don't work. They're out immediately. They look for a new one. So it's it's just not a normal model where you just rent out your your shelf space or you rent out your floor space. They have a revenue sharing model in there and they would like to have the fastest moving consumer goods in there. Okay. In steel, how long do you think this cycle will last? I mean, Malaysian investors tend to be very scared of teams and booms and busts. Well, it took uh, over a year before investors uh, latch onto the CPO team. I think there are a lot of skeptics in 05, if you remember. Once you cross, I think uh, I think it was 1005 or 1008, there was a sort of a mental block in the market that this is not sustainable, right? But it went on to over close to about 35. Right. Do we look at the schematics, the structural changes? Um, Basically, as in steel, there's been a lot of underinvestment in steel plants. Right? A lot of steel plants are not building to the specs which the market wants. The market wants high-grade coal roll, high-grade hot roll. 
they do not want your long products for construction anymore right they want all this to make your cars your white white uh, your white goods the market has shifted right you're looking for more quality more in terms of uh, quantity in terms of demand and supply conditions in palm oil you may take seven years from planting to get mm -hmm. a good yield but in uh, steel you may well get new capacity within a year would this you know change that supply demand conditions within a year um i think it takes more than that uh. we can as a blast furnace at 20 percent of capacity but we don't see uh this being a major trend to all the uh, steel players that they are doubling capacity, right? And like I said, it's very specialized. It's not steel is not a commodity product. You have long, you have flat, you have different grades. You have high hot coal roll. You have specialty steel, you have stainless steel. So it's not as commoditized as CPO, right? So if you are making a long, uh, long product, for you to shift over to a, a flat product. You might not have the expertise, although you have um, basically a steel facility. And the grade of steel, we are moving on to higher steel grades which require iron ore as a feedstock rather than scrap metal. So it requires a change in the business model itself. It's not as easy as it, as it thinks. I mean, if you are well versed with um, sourcing scrap metal, um, sourcing iron ore is a totally different proposition altogether. Right. So it's not it looks same same but it's not same same. Uh. <laughs> Wouldn't Does it line diversify be better than line industry? Um you can get a long very long discussion yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> In um Ramonia I thought I saw some reports that there were some worries about the uh, Indian contract a large Indian contract where some people thought they bid uh, too low a, a price for it. Um, that, that's one of the concerns. Uh, but we are in the stock mainly for the transformation. The, you will get uh, the orders coming from MMHE in a big way which they can't handle. That is what we are looking for. Uh, so that will overshadow the Indian contract in a large manner. So if the Indian contract comes, uh, it'll be added bonus. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't, uh, I don't think it affects our the change in transformation. We expect here. that MMHE has a surplus of jobs and there's a very uh, large pipeline of uh, jobs for, for Ramonia? I think so. If you look at the, um, the infrastructure which they need to build in East Malaysia, where MIC together with Petronas uh, with all the pipelines on the deep water, it's a huge amount of work, right? And you're contracting uh, infrastructure, you're not about to build it in the US or Japan and uh, ship it by sea over here. You rather that you manufacture it in segments, you could assemble it somewhere, this is the place for it, right? So we believe that, they, they, that it, it fills a niche in the long-term uh, supply chain. Uh, which is sort which is sort lacking. Uh, 